Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar about how to design an efficient and reliable CubeSat system. My name is Amin. I'm a RF application engineer at EMWX. This is brief overview of the presentation. So first we talk about CubeSat and some of its advantages as well as how CubeSat are being launched in space. Uh, following that, CubeSat antenna design challenges along with simulation results will be presented. At the end, we have a live demo. So in case you have any question, I'll be happy to answer them at the end of the presentation. All right, so what do we mean by CubeSats? CubeSats are simply a class of neutralized satellites that have become increasingly popular in academia and among hobbyists due to their short development time and low fabrication costs. The smallest dimension of the CubeSats is 10 cm by 10 cm by 10, and this corresponds to 1U. It has a mass of 1.3 kg. CubeSats can be used as one unit or in group of multiple units, as can be seen on the right. According to nanosat.eu, almost 1900 CubeSats have been launched to date. Most CubeSat missions take place in low Earth orbit or in LEO, which ranges from about 150 km up to approximately 600 km and is below the ionosphere. Within this, re within this region, there are many science satellites and the International Space Station, ISS. Only very few of the CubeSat are being operated for deep space communications. So let's look at some of the CubeSat mission types. CubeSats can be used to test instruments, conduct science experiments, enable commercial applications, and support education projects. For instance, CubeSats can be used for commercial applications like providing telecommunication services or capturing Earth observation images. Moreover, they can help test and validate innovative hardware or software before being integrated into more complex space mission. Uh, looking at the pie chart on the right, we can see a breakdown of the CubeSat missions. Nearly half of the mission were focused on technology demonstration where CubeSat were used as cost-effective way to test and validate hardware or software. The second biggest portion, which corresponds to 91%, was devoted to education purposes where CubeSats were used by different academic institutions to motivate students and make them familiar with satellite, with satellite subsystems. So let's look at some of the advantages of utilizing CubeSats. Unlike traditional satellites that consume high power, cost millions of dollars and take several years to manufacture, CubeSats are affordable and can be fabricated within two years. The other advantage of the CubeSat is that they use off-the-shelf components and produce, and produce no debris as they burn up in the atmosphere upon re-entry. So let's see how the CubeSat are launched in space. CubeSat can be launched as secondary payload from standardized injection modules such as the Poly Pico Satellite Orbital Deployer or PPOD, or can be deployed from the International Space Station. The development for the CubeSat is significantly less than the standard satellite missions and this is due to the fact that CubeSat can be launched as secondary payload from the standardized ejection modules. Uh, on the right, we can see a schematic view showing the CubeSat operation stages from the time it launches up to the time, <coughs> up to the end of its life, which, which is usually uh, up to one year. So far, we have talked about the CubeSat and some of its advantages and some of the CubeSat Type mission. So let's see. How, so let's look at some of the uh, CubeSat antenna design challenges. Due to the CubeSat's limited size, weight, and power budget, designing antennas for CubeSat platform is a challenging task. This means that any antenna design needs to comply with the size and the mass restrictions of CubeSats to provide more space for solar cells and meet operating frequency requirements and mission objectives. Moreover. With the growth of small satellite technologies, CubeSats are being endowed with more challenging missions that require high data reach 
which must be supported by high gain direction antennas. So from our discussion, it becomes very clear that designing an antenna for CubeSat is a real challenge, as there are so many parameters to account for. This is the uh, painted Yagi antenna that we are going to study today. Uh, the antenna is painted on uh, FFO substrate, which has the electric constant of 4.4 and loss tangent of 0.02. The antenna has total size of 10 cm by 9.8 cm, and this is smaller than the CubeSat surface. The antenna is designed to operate at 2.5 GHz. Like any other Yagi antennas, the painted Yagi has a reflector, driven element, and two directors. For 50 ohm impedance matching, tapered balloon is being used. So let's look at some of the uh, simulation results. On the right, we can see an animation of the electric field. Looking at the return loss, we can see that the antenna resonates at almost 2.35 gigahertz with reflection coefficient of almost minus 14 dB. In HFWX, we have what we call the antenna far field results table. In this table, we can see different antenna parameters such as maximum directivity, maximum gain, radiation efficiency, total efficiency. For our antenna, it has maximum gain of almost 3 dB and total efficiency of 71%. On the left, we can see the 3D radiation pattern of the antenna. The antenna again has maximum gain of 3 dB, which is long Y axis. Uh, so far, we uh, so far we looked at the performance of the antenna before being placed on the CubeSat. So to enhance the the gain of the Yagi antenna, one way is to increase the number of elements, and this is not possible in our case since we have a limited uh, space for the CubeSat. So now, so now let's see <clears throat> what would happen if we try to change the angle between the CubeSat and top surface, sorry, between the antenna and the top surface of the CubeSat. So for this, we'll be looking at three scenarios, 90 degree, 50 degree, and 10 degree. Uh, looking at the return loss uh, on the left, we can see there is a slight change in terms of resonant frequency. Also, we can see there is a bit of enhancement in terms of the reflection coefficient. <clears throat> so for the gain of the antenna for 90 degree we can see there is an increase of the gain and the reason for this is that at uh, 90 degree so there is uh, there's little interaction between the antenna and the CubeSat top surface and this helps and this helps boost the forward gain of the antenna so basically the radiation that gets directed in the other direction now gets reflected from the top surface of the CubeSat and this helps to increase the forward gain of the antenna. Uh, on the right, sorry, on the left we can see the 2D radiation pattern. Uh, at, at phi equal to zero, uh, the antenna has maximum radiation at theta equal to zero, along with some side lobes which are below minus 6 dB. So let's see what would happen if we decrease the angle to 50 degree. By decreasing the angle to 50 degree, we can see there is there's, there's shift in terms of the resonant frequency, but also now we have two resonant frequencies. So the first resonant frequency is at 1.1, which corresponds to L band, and second resonant frequency was almost 2.05, and this corresponds to S band. Looking at the gain, we can see uh, there is an increase of the gain as compared to the case of 90 degrees. And the reason for this, now as the, as the antenna gets closer to the top surface of the CubeSat, now we have more interaction and this helps to, to improve the forward gain of the antenna. On the right, we can see the 2D radiation pattern. 
So now let's see what would happen if we if we bring the CubeSat even closer <coughs> to the antenna. So on the right we can see there is again there is a shift in terms of resonant frequency and also there is enhancement of the reflection coefficient. Initially the antenna resonated at 2.35 with reflection coefficient of minus 14 dB. Now the antenna resonates at almost 27 gigahertz with reflection coefficient of minus 14 dB. So looking at the the gain, so now the gain gets enhanced from almost 3 dB for the Yagi printed antenna to almost 8 dB. And the reason for this is that as we go closer to the CubeSat top surface, so we get more interaction from the CubeSat body, and this helps to improve the uh, photogen of the antenna. Uh, on the right, we can see the 2D radiation pattern at phi equal to zero. So we have a maximum gain at theta equal to zero, along with some side loops which are below minus 18 dB. We know how to simulate such antennas using uh, HFWX. Uh, HFWX is fully embedded in SOLIDWORKS and is gold certified by SOLIDWORKS. So when you are done creating your geometry in SOLIDWORKS, you can just go ahead and start your simulation in HFWORKS. So it's simply just a tab. So basically you don't need to import any CAD. In HFWORKS, we have four types of study. We have antennas, S parameter, TDR, and resonance. But today we'll be focusing on antennas. As first step, we need to specify the frequency range. And also we can choose the type of the frequency sweep. For example, discrete sweep or fast sweep. Next is the, uh, the meshing. So we have two types of mesh. We have manual mesh and adaptive mesh. So if you know how to use the mesh, you can use manual mesh. Otherwise, you can set it to adaptive. In case if you want to do some thermal analysis, you can just choose the thermal coupling. After this, we need to apply material. So you just right click, you say apply material. We have the material library, which consists of material from uh, uh, different uh, vendors. For example, for substrates, we have <coughs> materials from uh, uh, Mitsubishi and uh, Rogers. After applying material, next step is setting up the boundary conditions. We have different boundary conditions. We have port, lumped port, lumped element, PEC, PMC, PEC symmetry, PMC symmetry, imperfect electric conductor, receive surfaces, radiation boundary, and signal. If you want to apply mesh control, you can just right click, you say apply apply mesh control. You can apply mesh control on bodies, faces, or edges. You can also specify the element size. All right, so let's look at some of the uh, simulation results. So this is the printed IAG antenna, which consists of four elements, and it has also the tapered balloon for the matching purposes. This is our uh, radiation boundary, which is air in our case. In HFWorks, we have what we call the results table. Under this table, we can see different uh, circuit parameters, such as general ace matrix, renormalized ace matrix, impedance matrix, admittance, port result, VSWR. We can also print versus current or, or frequencies. Also, we can export results to different formats, such as text file, CIT, SPC, or touchstone. Let's look at the uh, return loss. So for the printed antenna, it resonates at almost 235 gigahertz with reflection coefficient of almost minus 14 dB. So to plot reflection coefficient, you need just to right click, you say to the plot, and from the parameter type, you choose as parameters or any other parameters that you want to plot. In HFX also we have what we call the far field results table. 
under this table, we can see different uh, parameters, as you can see, such as directivity, gain, radiation efficiency, and total efficiency. You can also print, also you can export results. This is the 2D game pattern of the antenna. And this is the 3D game pattern. So the antenna has maximum gain of 3 dB, as is a long y axis. So now let's look at the what will happen for the other cases when we put the antenna on the CubeSat. So first let's start with 90 degrees. So this is the antenna. This is at 90 degrees. So for the CubeSat, is made of uh, aluminium. So as compared to the antenna, as compared to the previous antenna, so now we can see again the slight uh, shift in terms of resonant frequency. And this is the 2D radiation pattern at phi equal to zero. So you can see we have some side loops which are below minus six dB. And also we can see that the antenna has maximum gain of uh, almost 5.5 dB. You can also animate electric field. So to animate, you can just right click, you said animate. So you can see animation of the electric field. So now let's look at the uh, second scenario of 50 degrees. So this is the antenna at 50 degree angle. Again, the antenna is made of aluminium. So the antenna has two resonant frequencies. First one is one up at 1.1 gigahertz, and second is 2.05 gigahertz. And it's a dual band. This is the 2D radiation pattern. So we have maximum gain for phi equal to zero at theta at theta of 184. So you can see also the gain of the antenna. So we have m maximum gain of 7 dB. So let's look at the last case of uh, 10 degrees. So this is a 10 degree angle between the antenna and the top surface of CubeSat. So this is the return loss. So you can see there is a shift in terms of the resonant frequency. Also, there is a enhancement in terms of the reflection coefficient. So this is the 2D radiation pattern. So at phi equal to zero, we have maximum at theta equal to zero. And also we have some side loops, which are below minus 18 dB. So again, you can see that the antenna has maximum gain of 8 dB. All right, here comes the end of live uh, demo. So to summarize, you have seen some of CubeSat antenna design challenges and learned how changing the angle between the antenna and the CubeSat body helps increasing the gain of the antenna. Decreasing the angle causes more interaction between the CubeSat and the antenna, and this helps enhancing the gain of the antenna. We have demonstrated to you how easy and efficient HF works in designing robust antennas for CubeSat missions. With that, I would like to thank you, and now the floor is open for questions. Thanks.